This was the evening before launch, uh, and you can see it, we couldn't ask for better weather. Once the winds calmed down on the 21st, the 22nd turned out to be a spectacular night to go fly, uh, with a, uh, albeit a, an ungodly hour to lift off at at 3.13 in the morning. Uh, here we are walking out of the uh, crew quarters, and I was surprised, you may have seen me jerk my hand to the side with surprise as I saw a member of our training team standing there smiling at us. So we had a lot of support from Johnson down there for the launch. I don't care how many times you sit on top of this thing, uh, these few seconds that you're witnessing here are, are something that uh, you can never really be fully prepared for. Uh, the power of the space shuttle main engines as they throttle up on the pad in those final six seconds and that uh, feeling in your heart, the bottom of your heart, that you know good and well you're going someplace in a hurry here momentarily is, uh, is one that uh, will be always a part of my memory. I never experienced a night launch, and as you can see from the liftoff, it's incredibly bright. Uh, as we cleared the tower, I watched the tower go by. Uh, it was like daytime looking out the left window. And uh, during the later stages of ascent, I got to witness uh, post-solid uh, rocket motor separation here, the experience of seeing out the front window of the orbiter pulsating lights from the main engines in the rear. So you are really kind of in a little glow there a little uh, lighted glow as you proceed uphill toward main engine cutoff eight and a half minutes after liftoff. Okay, and uh, was, you can see us opening the payload bay doors here, and this is sped up a bit, by the way, so it doesn't take so long in the film, but uh, that's always a relief to get on orbit, get a go to stay on orbit and open the doors. The next morning on flight day two, after going through the internal airlock and down the tunnel, uh, we got to the, uh, the hatch for uh, the space hab, and here Ron and I are open that, opening that on our second morning, first real morning on orbit, our second day, to get ready to open up the hab and activate it and start, start operations back there. And this was a very busy place during the mission. As we float into it here, you can see that there was a lot of stowage back here. There's some new soft stowage bags up on the wall, first time they've ever flown. Those were developed for a lot of the equipment that we had to transfer to Mir. You just saw the gyrodyne on the right side, and uh, that, this panning view shows uh, the bio rack and the glove box. So between the bio rack and all the transfer operations back here that went on while we were docked, it was a busy place. And back up on the flight deck, uh, Rick is uh, taking a look at the camera mounted up there. That's our electronic camera for KidSat. We left it in the window during the undocked times. It took uh, digitized images of the Earth uh, and made them available to the students on the ground who were controlling the camera. Uh, this is a view of uh, Florida from KidSat, and I want to emphasize that we really began the rendezvous portion of this mission right from launch as we launched into a lower catch-up orbit on Mir. Uh, and as we prepared on flight day two, our particular role in the rendezvous and got closer and closer to Mir, uh, but we didn't really get the good video, of course, until we got uh, within a thousand feet or so. This is looking out the ODS center line up at the Mir as we're approaching from underneath. This is the uh, mirror view, what they saw as they were looking down at the space shuttle Atlantis uh, passing over the Earth. We included a couple of views of the crew activities in the flight deck. Uh, Chile at the aft station flying the vehicle, Rich assisting him, and I was bobbing in and out of the field of view there, uh, working the computers and uh, assisting in my particular role. Uh, this is a view of the Mir space station as we passed from across the Terminator, uh, from sun, uh, sunlit portion of the planet to the backside, and it was uh, very interesting to see that uh, with the running lights, uh, Mir was very visible and it was uh, quite bright even on the dark side of the planet. Well, as, we, as this uh, process continued of the rendezvous and approach up the R-bar, got closer and closer to Mir, and uh, again, this was sped up too, and uh, part of that intent was to make it flow quicker in the movie, but an added side benefit is it makes the commander look even better because it looks like it's really going fast. <laughs> But Chile did, did a phenomenal job flying the space shuttle up to the mirror, and you can see this is the end game here. This is where it all comes together, and uh, hitting those critical docking parameters. Uh, the target, of course, is shown on the right on this split screen image. Uh, we really did get that jostle as we uh, made contact and had the post contact thrusting firing. And then uh, I must confess to a little bit of relief in the cockpit once we uh, reach that milestone. There, Chile's being uh, congratulated by Rich, and it's on to docked activities, Rich. We're given a panorama of the, uh, the mirror complex, starting with the docking module here, and now you're looking through the uh, aft cockpit. I'll refer back to the target you just saw. We confirmed after we docked that uh, no flyout was required. Uh, thank you, Melise. But uh, it's a beautiful, uh, this thing is, this mirror complex is really large, and I have memories of uh, standing back in the ODS, looking up through the tunnel and, and thinking that it was at least 300 feet up to the mirror complex. Here's a view of the initial hatch opening uh, from the Russian side, of course. 
And uh, you're going to see a couple uh, happy faces here between uh, Yuri Onofarenko and uh, Kevin Chilton. Tremendous, uh, tremendous relief uh, once you get there and you, uh, you join up and, and realize that uh, it's an excellent place to be. There's some good work going on up there and uh, felt like home for Shannon already. Neither one of those guys were happy. <laughs> and of course, Shannon, uh, she felt at home the minute she got there. And uh, they put her right to work. She, uh, she was one of the experts in the transfer activities. And that's uh, no, no small part due to the preparation we had here. And uh, here we're getting ready for the welcoming ceremony, one of the official PAO acts. Uh, due to a small miscoordination, we had the flags in the wrong location. So you're going to see uh, Yuri Ustashev bringing the American flag into the docking module base, or not the docking module, but the base block for the uh, uh, welcome ceremony. And then we're going to pass some gifts that we took up to them. What you'll see is some of the uh, personal items that uh, we gave to our Russian crewmates. They both have a love for children and uh, the future of space exploration. So some of the gifts that we gave them were, were uh, space books for their children. And uh, it uh, brought tears to their eyes. And here you see the gift exchange. Uh, some of the books uh, bought right here in Space Center Houston. Well, I think I need to pick up here, right, with the uh, transport. Is it you, Ron? I think I'll do that. There's uh, Rich and Rick uh, taking off a docking ring from a uh, gyrodyne. We brought up a new one and brought uh, uh, back a uh, used one. We also transferred nearly 1,500 pounds of water. This is a byproduct of the shuttle's power uh, system. So uh, we removed iodine, and, uh, iodine from our system and supplied uh, minerals and biocide and then transferred these water bags uh, to the Mir space station. This is going through the uh, shuttle side. There's some empty food containers which we returned to Earth from the Mir station. And finally, working our way to the docking module. There's temporary stowage in the white mesh bags of food containers containing um, many of the supplies that will help Shannon and, and Yuri and Yuri in the, in the coming months. We transferred uh, nearly two tons of science hardware over and nearly one ton back. This is a Coor system used for navigation on the approach and docking for the Russian system that will be brought back and refurbished. We also needed to keep track of the items that went over to Mir and those that we're returning back to Earth. So Chile and I are making sure that we have uh, all of the items in our inventory management system in, in order. The blue box on the left-hand side is a refrigerator freezer in which we brought back urine, blood, and saliva samples. The glove box in which Linda is working is where we carried on some of the uh, technology development as well as fundamental biology for a joint effort between the U.S. and several European countries. Here are lentil seeds, and the investigation here is for statocyte uh, polarity. We had several uh, experiments in, in biology. The mid-deck is where we had lunch with the Amir 21 crew on uh, dock day. We went over for dinner in the base block of Amir uh, to enjoy Russian food. Each uh, night, if we had a chance, we sent uh, mail messages by way of a laptop computer. And you see Shannon doing just that, back to her family. On three separate days, we saw the comet. Many of you may have seen it here. Hakitaki, in which it was very bright, and Rich was the first to notice that, and on subsequent uh, days we kept track of the comet. Now the EVA activities. Thank Linda. Well, uh, Ron is helping Rich and I uh, get suited up here in the airlock. Uh, we're getting pretty close to getting to our pre-breathe timeline, and following that we, uh, we get ready to go out the hatch. We had a lot of room inside because we had an airlock and a docking adapter, and uh, came out of the hatch on the docking adapter. Our first job was to install some clamps on the handrails to deploy the experiment packages later. And then our task was to move to a camera to remove it on the docking module. And this was used on STS-74 when they docked with Mir. And then when they left the docking module there, the camera was left there also. So one of our tasks was to remove it and bring it back to Earth. And uh, I took some of the smaller items back. And here you see Rich. He's uh, translating with the camera itself, which is is rather large, and he was being very careful of that as he shepherded it back to the, the tunnel adapter where he stowed it uh, temporarily back inside till we were finished with the EVA. Here you see uh, Linda and myself removing one of the four MEEP containers for installation into the, onto some clamps on the docking module. 
Uh, we tested out some new tools and equipment for use on the ultimate uh, International Space Station, uh, the rigid tether and the multiple use tether, which we use to transport the, uh, the MEEPS to their work site and uh, install them into the clamps. Uh, here you're going to see one of those activities. And then uh, one of the funnest things that Linda and I had to do were the uh, deployment of the MEEPS, and you're going to see that here. Uh, it's so much easier to do up there. You just give it a little flick and it uh, flies around. And I'm sure that this is real time instead of sped up. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, tremendously uh, finely divine, de designed hardware that worked well in flight. And uh, we can learn a lot from the uh, folks at Langley and our own engineering director at here that helped design the hardware for this uh, particular EVA. It all worked well. And we deployed uh, this one here is uh, MEEP number four, I believe. Uh, the, the MEEP experiments are orbital debris sensors and uh, passive uh, samplers. Well, this is my cue for my second come in. Uh, after really a whirlwind and flurry of activity over several days, we were all very, uh, very sad to get ready to, to depart the Mir space station. This is the farewell ceremony, and I think I can speak for the rest of the crew. Certainly for me, it was the most emotion-filled moment that I'd had in orbit in two missions. Uh, of course, saying goodbye to Shannon, there's uh, Chile giving her a hug and wishing her well for her uh, long stay up there until STS-79 goes back to pick her up. On undock day, we uh, again were very busy on that day, similarly to the uh, docking day. Uh, we prepared uh, configuration-wise this orbiter and mirror complex to separate, and uh, very shortly here we'll see that separation sequence and leading into the fly-around. Uh, this is Chili waving goodbye to his uh, buddies over there, the Mir-21 crew, including Shannon. The Russians were very kind to uh, ship down uh, this video, which then came from soup to MCC and uh, enabled us to uh, put it in our crew movie in a very timely fashion. Uh, separation here, again, sped up. We were, uh, as I mentioned before, very sad to leave and wished we could have stayed longer and uh, been up there with uh, our friends. The, separa the initial separation burn, couple of uh, low Z uh, pulses out to uh, get going and uh, establish the initial opening rate. And as we continue to fly out, we uh, assumed a range of uh, 450 to 550 feet targeted to conduct this fly around of the mirror, which I was uh, privileged to fly. And it's been, for me, one of the most professionally rewarding things I've ever done. But at the same time, uh, in the background of my mind, also a very emotionally charged event. Uh, this video will uh, share some of uh, what we saw from on orbit, which was just absolutely out outstanding and uh, flabbergasting, really, to see this um, orbiting complex out our windows, and here in this particular case, to see video shot from the mirror of uh, America's greatest technology achievement ever, a space shuttle in orbit, doing what it does best. This is a view of uh, the Mir space station over the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, right after we uh, gave the KU antenna to uh, COM to send TV down, this is the first picture that came down to the ground. And this particular view is as we, the Mir passes through the horizon, approaching the Terminator. And no, it is not a model. We saw it with our own eyes. And <laughs> that's what it was. And it was uh, outstandingly beautiful with the backlit uh, view and something that I will always treasure in my mind. Well, it's coming home time now, and uh, Ron did a, a bang-up job shooting these scenes. Uh, that, that little uh, camcorder that he holds, there's a, a self-shot on the way down, starts weighing zero at the start of re-entry, and then it starts feeling like it weighs a ton on the way down. So he did a great job shooting this. This is out the overhead window as we're coming in through uh, the re-entry, and you can see the plasma trail behind the orbiter there. It pulsates like that and literally lights the cockpit up and, with flashes as you come down. Out the front window, you just get a nice steady pink and orangish glow as you go through the maximum heating. And here we are in a roll reversal, uh, one of three that we did as we uh, lined up for our approach at Edwards Air Force Base. Rather unique long range shot here where you can actually see the RCS jets firing in the tail of the shuttle as we decelerated through around Mach 2, uh, approaching Edwards to keep, uh, help keep the nose pointed forward. And uh, I logged a night landing on this one because officially the sun hadn't come up. But. <laughs> But it sure was a pretty time of day to land. It was just, uh, the xenons were on, but you're, you really didn't need them. You could see the ground just fine. And uh, that, there wasn't hardly a breath of wind in the air. It was real calm, smooth skies. And, uh, it, and it just, you know, you, you, you knew what you were flying. The space shuttle was responding just so beautifully. Uh, it really, uh, really flew uh, 
marvelously and was a joy to bring in for a landing. Rick, uh, go ahead and punched out the landing gear for us on time and then the, the uh, drag chute and the timing was just right on that and uh, cushioned the nose slap down as, as we came uh, rolling down the runway for a stop. And I think I'll quote Andy Allen from STS-75, there's, uh, there's no better feeling than that call wheel stop, particularly when you you know, you know you've, you've done your job, uh, you've done the best you can, and uh, now it's, it's over and it's time to turn, uh, turn the vehicle over to the folks at Kennedy to get it uh, ready to start uh, back through the same process all over again to go up and uh, retrieve Shannon on STS-79. If I look a little uh, confused here at the end, I was doing a nose count and I came up one short <laughs> during the walk around. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but I was assured that that was the right answer. So uh, everybody felt terrific after the flight, and it was certainly good to get back home to family and friends and to you all back here in Houston. <laughs>